Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Telflare Mouse. We're going to take you with us on some experimentation using the Lehigh Defense 50 caliber control fracturing brass bullet. Compared to a 22 long rifle, the bullet is huge. Weighing in at uh, 350 grains, it's even twice the weight of this 30 caliber bullet. We'll be using this FS12 Flex Seal Wad, a nitro card to try to give it a little more support, and this rigid structure Sabo sometimes just called the RSS Sabo, which is kind of redundant. The bullet is supported by this very thick base, which is about 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. The RSS is designed for much shorter bullets such as this, and we had excellent results using this setup in previous tests. Although the RSS is designed to handle bullets weighing 350 grains, the bullet is so long that we no longer have a very good fit. It bulges out and it would never fit in the shell properly. So one thing we want to try is seeing how a modified Sabo will work with this setup. Okay, where are you going to be aiming at? Uh, I'm going to try for center. It's kind of clear right there. Okay, I got you. We'll see how accurate they are. And then pull the target back. We're at about 10 yards or less. What do you say? About 10. 10 yards, okay. 10 YouTube yards anyway. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go. It says 2648. That's, <laughs> that was faster than I imagined. I don't. Well, it wasn't the bullet going 2600 feet per second. It was probably the Sabo and the wad. But as you can see, there's a hole in the center of the Sabo. So the, essentially the bullet passed through the Sabo and through the wad. And there it is kind of lingering along there. See, not knowing where they're going to land, I'm just going to hold it on center. And... Okay, let's try it again. All right, here we go. 21.30. We're getting good velocities, but... Well, shot number two was an utter failure also. This time we can actually see a hole right through the center of the FS-12 gas seal that's about to impact right there. Now we thought we had pretty good support on that bullet, but as you can see, we need a much better support system than what we're using. Okay, let's try another one, see if we can get, get this to work. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. All right, there we go. 22.15. I saw something go over the top. <laughs> Probably the wide. And surprise, surprise, another complete failure. The same exact problem. Uh, now these bullets are, again, 350 grain. The ones that we tested that worked well were 250 grain. Now in retrospect, I would probably use the shortest gas seal I could find and a very thick uh, fiber wadding to give it much more support. And even with this setup, I think it would still barely fit in a three inch hole. Okay, I am ready. There we go, again. 2662. <laughs> I don't know where these are going. This was definitely a very frustrating day of testing. Nothing seemed to work right. It had the same failure every single time. Another problem I probably had was using a, a powder that was just way too fast burning, using uh, 20 five grains of E3 powder, a very fast burning powder, which definitely didn't help the situation at all. Okay, this is the last one we're gonna try. I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna put this one low just to see if we can catch it. I don't think that was going 51.94. But. Well, if we had one thing going for us, it was consistency. And the consistency here is it failed the exact same way in every single shot. I'm sure my uh, powder load data was completely wrong. My thought, train of thought was these are kind of light compared to a slug, so I'm going to need a faster burning powder. Definitely not the right route to take. In our previous test, we used long shot, which is a slower burning powder and we were able to get velocities of over 1600 feet per second with those 
Now if you plan on using the rigid structure Sabo, hopefully this video t will give you an idea of what not to do so that your results will be better than ours. Thanks for watching.